Today we'll be talking about multiplying decimals and whole numbers using a place value chart. The problem that we're going to work with is 3 times 0.34 or 34 hundredths. The first step that we want to do is identify the decimal in unit form, so telling how many you have of each place value and then how many copies of each place value you have. One way that we can think about doing this is filling in the sentence frame blank copies of blank. In this case, since we are multiplying by 3, we have 3 copies of 3 tenths, since the 3 is in the tenths place, and 4 hundredths. Step 2 is we want to draw the copies on your place value chart. We can start with the tenths. And I, since I have three tenths, I need to draw three tenths three times. So I have one, two, three, one, two, three, and the third copy here. Next, I'll move over to my hundredths column. I'm going to draw four copies, or four discs, three copies. There's one copy. two copies, and three copies. Steps three and four can be combined. Step three is to count how many discs in each column, and as you're counting, you may need to bundle. And remember that when you're bundling, you're looking for 10 discs in one column, which can be regrouped and bundled into one disc when you move to the column to the left. I always start on the far right, so we're going to count how many, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have a group of 10, so I know that I need to bundle. So I'm going to draw my circle around 10, and I know that this 10, when I move to the column to the left, creates 1 tenth. Now I can count how many I have left and that is 2. Now I'll move to the tenths column and count those. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 10 in this column, so I can bundle. So I draw my circle around the 10, and I know that when I move a column to the left, that equals 1. Then I can go back and count how many tenths are left, which is zero. And then I don't forget to drop my decimal down. And then I go to my ones column and I see that I have one disk. Step five is to finish your problem by writing the equation algorithm with the answer. You can write an addition equation or you can write a multiplication equation. Let's start with the addition equation you add up each row. So in this row I have point three four and then this row same thing. You can also think of it as three copies of point three four so you're writing three four three times and then down one same thing. And since it's an addition, because we're multiplying, we're going to do a plus sign. And the answer would be what we came up with over here. One point zero two and you want to make sure that you're lining up your columns so all the hundredths are lined up and all the tenths are lined up for the multiplication sentence or equation you would take what we have up here which is three times point three Four equals our answer here one point zero two.
two or one and two hundredths. Next, let's take a look at the second way that we can approach multiplying decimals and whole numbers, and that way is using an area model. We'll be using the same equation, three times 0.34 or 34 hundredths. Step one is the same as using a place value chart. We want to identify the decimals in unit form and how many copies. Same with the other one, we can say that we have three copies of three tenths and four hundredths. In the area model, it is especially important to identify the decimal in unit form, breaking it down into how many of each place value you have. Step two is we want to draw our area model. You start with drawing a rectangle. You want to label the side with how many copies you have. We have three copies. Next, you want to draw and label columns for each place value. Since I am identifying two place values, I'm going to draw two columns, one for tenths and one for hundredths. And then I want to label each column with the appropriate amount of my decimal. My first column will be three tenths. and then four hundredths. I would recommend you writing everything, but I'm gonna abbreviate hundredths. Step three is that for each column you wanna multiply the side number, three, by the number at the top. So for my first box, I'm gonna multiply three times three, which equals nine, and you don't want to forget to label your answer. I'm going to abbreviate with a T since I don't have room. Next I'll move to the next box, which will be three from the side times four from the top, which will equal 12, and don't forget to label, because it's not 12, it's actually 12 hundredths, and I'm going to label with an H. Now step four is you want to write each product from each of the column boxes in standard form, so as a number, and then write an addition sentence. For my first box, I have nine tenths, which I know after my decimal, tenths has one place value. So then I just start by filling in my number from the product, which is nine. Hundredths, I know that hundredths is two place value columns after the decimal. So I draw my two columns, and then I fill in my number, starting with the far right number, and then move over. Next step is using these numbers from your columns in standard form, you want to write an addition sentence. So I would take 0 0.9 and add 0.12, making sure that I am lining up my columns from my decimals. This is addition sentence, so I'm going to make sure that I do that correctly. Sometimes it helps me to fill in missing numbers with zeros, just so I can see. So now I solve, which is zero plus two is two. Nine plus one is 10, but since I can only have one number, I have to carry. So I put my zero here for the 10, and I carry the one. I make sure that I drop my decimal down. And then in my ones column, I just have a one. There we go. Step five, and to finish the solving of multiplying decimals and whole numbers using an area model is to write the equation with the product. And the product is the answer to a multiplication sentence. So I'm going to go back to my original sentence, which is three copies, or three times 
equals, and I look back at how I solved it using my area model, and my answer is 1.02, or 1 and 2 hundredths. I can check my answer and make sure they're right with the place value chart way to solve decimals and whole numbers. And I see that they are both the same, so I know that I did both ways correctly.